Hello guys, this is Dr. Ergin and today we are going to talk about why my blood sugar is high in the morning. Stay tuned. Okay, so I get this question all the time. So some, in, my, in one of the videos that I said, typically the best blood sugars are in the morning. And some people said, oh no, my blood sugar goes up during the day. Oh, my blood sugar goes down during the day, I'm sorry. So they say my blood sugar is actually higher in the morning uh, than the later time of the day. Well, that is true for some people. Again, that depends on what is going on with your body. So I said this because most of the time people go on medications like metformin or Orlantis or anything like that and they end up with the blood sugar being okay in the morning because those medications work at night and they don't eat anything during the day during the night hopefully <laughs> hopefully <laughs> but here's the thing you know when um, when you start your day you start eating right so typically you expect your blood sugar to go higher now why blood sugars are high in the morning sometimes higher than the night before so again that depends on what you're taking uh, during the day if you're taking for example like glipizide that is commonly prescribed medication not my favorite but it's commonly prescribed and that medication works for a while and then it wears off uh, and then this medication makes your body make insulin right so glipizide produces insulin and that helps with your meals and so forth but then it wears off and then at night your body still needs insulin so insulin is not just necessary for the food your body needs insulin anyways so even if you're eating no carbs whatsoever you still need insulin because your liver will make glucose you have to have glucose in your system so yes you don't eat carbs good for you there's some keto people that are they're crazy about it it's fine uh, but even if <laughs> they're trying to say sometimes that if you're on a keto diet you have no diabetes that's not true a lot of people will still have diabetes even on a keto diet uh, in my practice I have a lot of them so I don't know um, the people talk, talk about their own experiences but that doesn't reflect the rest of the population so um, yes keto diet if you're going to keto your diabetes will dramatically improve if you can stay on it great stay on it but you have to be medically supervised I don't recommend anybody to watch a YouTube video and go on a keto diet so we're going to make a big keto video uh, with diabetes uh, make sure that you watch the video it's going to come up soon what I'm trying to say um, here even if you don't eat carbs you have to make glucose in your body and for that glucose to be transported to the cells you still need insulin now what happens is your liver is the biggest depot of sugar so when you're not having carbs your liver normally stores the carbs that you have eaten previously and after 8 or 12 hours that depot runs out so normally liver gives the sugar to the body to make sure that sugar keeps going in the body um, and and then if there's no sugar the, the liver makes just sugar that's that you have to have certain blood sugar even if it is down to 80 that blood sugar has to be maintained right so but like any other organ in the body liver is insulin resistant especially in type 2 diabetics now in type 2 diabetes your liver is insulin resistant and the insulin is the hormone that tells liver how much sugar to make so even if you have enough insulin, in, uh, a lot of insulin, not enough, a lot of insulin in your body, sometimes doctors check insulin levels, which doesn't mean anything actually, because the amount of insulin doesn't necessarily tell you if the insulin is doing the job or not, or you know you have to really check the insulin resistance, not just the insulin. But anyways, so even if you have a lot of insulin in your body, that insulin may not be enough for your liver. Your liver may think that you need blood sugar. So insulin is like a break on your liver, that tells your liver okay we don't need much of glucose you know I'm here calm down now sometimes liver doesn't listen just because of the insulin resistance so as a result your liver keep making blood sugar at night that's why you guys wake up with a high blood sugar in the morning that is the answer now how do you get rid of the blood sugar high blood sugar in the morning let's talk about that Okay, so there are a couple of ways you can do this. So number one, as we discussed, if the liver is insulin resistant, what should you do? 
you should basically reduce the insulin resistance, right? There are a couple of ways to do that. The, for example, a medication called metformin or pioglitazone, these are two relatively inexpensive medications, can do that. There are some herbal medications that can do that as well in a similar way. So, um, or, or you just basically make yourself insulin sensitive by exercising more. Try it. So go for a two mile walk if you're not walking at all. Go for a mile or two, um, like in the late afternoon when the weather is not hot. Uh, I'm from Florida, so it's always hot here, but that's why I always go later in the day. Or whenever it's best for you, just go at a time that is comfortable. Um, that exercise will have an effect for the next 24 hours. Isn't that amazing? So you just exercise some right now, and you can still, still see the benefit up to 24 hours. So your blood sugars will be lower. If that exercise is not enough, that means that you have to do more. But your sugars definitely will be better than the days that you don't exercise. Uh, if you see the difference, I think you'll be more willing to, to exercise. So if you don't have to exercise or exercise, exercise is not enough, then we sometimes have to use pharmaceutical or herbal medications, depending on your preference, to bring the blood sugar down. And that is to improve the insulin sensitivity in your liver. Now, of course, if you lose weight by doing some sort of diet, keto diet, or low carb diet, low fat diet, doesn't matter, you know, just do a diet that is good for you that you can manage. Some people love keto diet, some people hate keto diet. So it's it's not just one fits all. So and I'm not a I'm not a big supporter of any diet except the Mediterranean diet because that, that that diet has been studied multiple times, has been proven multiple times to reduce the heart attacks and strokes and to reduce the uh, diabetes as well. Um, keto diet unfortunately doesn't have any studies, any long-term studies or short-term studies to prove that it reduced any heart attacks or anything like that. Yeah, it reduces your sugar, but reducing sugar is not everything. So we have to look at the health in a general fashion anything that claims anybody that claims anything about any diet or medicine have to prove that it actually works in many different ways and so forth so um, again uh, we will work with you guys to see what we can do um, again you have to talk with your doctor uh, possibly preferably an endocrinologist and uh, of course, um, after the discussion, you guys make a um, an informed decision together. And you, um, if you need a medication, you go for it. Uh, of course, you need to understand what you're taking, how you're taking the side effects, and all that stuff. So don't jump on a medication unless you really know the side effects or um, the uh, benefits. Actually, most people get hung up on the side effects. So here's what happens: people. Uh, look on the internet, right? So they find the side effects that are seen one in a 10,000. They say, oh, I don't want to take the medication. But the benefits are so high, they're just going for a blind eye for the benefits, and they just get hung up on the very minor risk sometimes. Again, diabetes is not just a science, guys. It is an art. So you have to choose your fight. So. You want to do exercise and diet? You have time for it? Go for it. We will support you. We will be watching you over. I promote always remote patient monitoring and remote patient management because when I am remotely managing you and staying in touch with you, I'm always with you. That is not something you get from anybody. You normally go to a doctor, they give you a pill. Good luck. Good luck. Hope it works. It's, it's, it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. So. If you hear about the medication, if you hear about a side effect, you should be able to say, hey, doc, you know, I heard about this. What do you think? You know, is it going to affect me or, or, you know, should I, uh, you know, what's my benefit? How much benefit do I have? How much risk do I have? Right. So unfortunately, trust to doctors is going down uh, and people are skeptical and people actually think that they can just do it themselves. Um, it's not a garden work. OK, so unfortunately, <laughs> medicine is not something that you can just figure it out. But. Um, uh, it is important to get the right information from the right person, not just from healthline.com or webmd.com. Guys, 
I know who writes those articles. They're not real doctors. They're just a bunch of freelancers to just pick up information from right and left website, put it together, and create a business. That's not where you should be getting your information from. But back to the topic, right? <laughs> Sorry, got sidetracked. Um, your liver is responsible. We are not playing the blame game here. Yes, you can do dieting better. Yes, you can exercise better. Yes, we can support you. Yes, we can tell you how to do it if you want to hear how to do it. You know, some people are just very self-motivated and they don't need it, but we can definitely help you with that. But also, we can guide you through uh, if you need a medication to convince your liver not to make so much sugar. Sometimes, you know, everything fails and we have to go on an insulin. Again, going on an insulin is not a uh, life sentence. Uh, don't look at that that way. Uh, a lot of people are extremely happy that they are on once a day insulin. Uh, they see their blood sugars immediately improve. Uh, again, diet and exercise is not always uh, helpful for everybody. So let your doctor decide. Do your best on your on your end. And if your blood sugars are not still coming down in the morning, you have to do something. You have to try the pills depending on the situation. Again, we are talking about type 2 diabetics. Type 1 diabetics, they always have to take insulin. They have to take insulin multiple times a day. That's a totally different story. Uh, and we are occasionally talking about uh, type 1 diabetes management and the devices they use, etc. cetera. Uh, but, but what I am talking today is about strictly to, about type 3 diabetes. So another problem with this high blood sugars we uh, experience in the morning uh, is sometimes it's just um, you know, eating late or eating high fat food. So what happens when you eat high fat food the absorption is so slow that your blood sugar may be, you know, 150 or 140 when you go to bed, but then that pizza that you ate can actually show up way later down the road, and then you may wake up with a very high blood sugar. So that is something you need to be aware of. Um, eating the dinner early on will definitely help. Uh, taking maybe a walk after dinner definitely will help your m morning blood sugars. Uh, and most importantly, uh, night eating habits, uh, unfortunately, is very common. Um, people get cravings, and they end up getting up, they cannot sleep, and they end up eating something. Now, if you're going to eat something, you can try to really have something with a low glycemic index if you're going to eat a carb, like an apple. Uh, half an apple, I think, will be able to curb your appetite. Or just stick with your mozzarella stick, uh, whatever you want to go for um, that is not, you know, high in carb or, or possibly no carb. Uh, yogurt may not be a bad, um, you know, a, a snack if you have to, if you are not going to be able to sleep without eating. But anytime you go eat some crackers or try to drink juice or have uh, fruits that are high in carbs like melons and stuff, it will definitely increase your blood sugar drastically. So you have to be really careful about that. So the third problem that can actually really increase your blood sugar is if you are having a low blood sugar. So believe it or not, if you are having a low blood sugar in the middle of the night, which typically happens between midnight and 3 or 4 o'clock, your body will give a reaction, and that's called smoggy effect you're going to have a spike in your blood sugar. So you're basically dipping down. That generally happens from taking too much basal insulin. You generally dip down and then and then your body gives a stress reaction. You sometimes wake up and sometimes you don't, but then your blood sugar spikes right back up because your body makes a hormone called glucagon. When your blood sugar is going down, glucagon goes up. So adrenaline goes up, so you may be having a nightmare or something, I don't know, but you're going to have a lot of turmoil in your hormones when your blood sugar goes down. And then when that happens, you're, you're going to wake up with a very high blood sugar. So when people come up uh, or wake up with um, high blood sugars, we ask them to check their blood sugars at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, if their blood sugar is 3 o'clock in the morning, let's say is down to 60 and they wake up with 200, that I know I have to fix that 60 blood sugar before I think about 200 because I know the 200 is the result of 60. Okay, is that clear? Now, on the other hand, if that 3 o'clock blood sugar, let's say, is um, 180 and then you wake up with 220, yeah, I know that your blood sugar is steadily going up. That is, if you don't have a Dexcom or Freestyle Libre, you know, these are the tools that really 
helps a lot for the doctors and for the patient because if you have a Dexcom or Libra, just look at it. If your blood sugar is dipping down at night, then you know why it's going back up. If your blood sugars are steadily going up, then that means that your liver is just making too much sugar your liver is making or or you're eating something too late or um, or you missed your exercise, whatever the reason may be that drives your blood sugar up. You just have to be sometimes uh, playing the detective work uh, as long as you know what really can be causing the high blood sugar. And if you identify what is causing the high blood sugar, then you can fix it. If it is your liver, if it is your insulin resistant, no matter what you do, you exercise and you eat right, you don't eat late, uh, you don't eat after midnight, but your blood sugar is still going high in the morning without having a low at three o'clock in the morning, that means that you really need some sort of insulin sensitizer. And that will be metformin, pyoglitazone, or some herbal medications, or sometimes the long-acting insulins. Again, long-acting insulins could be Lantus, could be Levomir, could be Tujeo, could be Traceba, uh, even could be Novolin N or Himalin N, uh, depending on uh, your situation, which is the right medication. Of course, insurance covers may play a role. Uh, all these things we think about. Uh, again, you know, when I try to prescribe medication, of course, I'm trying to give you the best thing with the most benefit and the least side effects. Uh, some people cannot afford their insulins. We help them to get their insulins uh, free of charge by applying to finance, uh, the uh, pharmaceutical companies. Uh, there are a lot of ways we can try to uh, help people with their medication prices. Um, even if they have insurance sometimes or Medicare, uh, we uh, try to find ways to get the financial help for our patients. Uh, we cannot just tell them just, just don't eat anything. It's just it just doesn't work that way, guys. So I hope uh, that video is useful to you. Please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our channel so you can be a diabetes pro.